Welcome to this tutorial video looking at the VCE topic of networks. In this video we'll be looking at critical path analysis. We will perform a forward scan and backward scan, we'll examine a critical path and we'll do some calculations upon float times. First of all let's look at an activity chart. An activity chart is the one shown on the screen. It describes a list of activities and letter codes them. It presents which other activities have to be done before you can commence that activity, what we call a predecessor, and the time for each of the activities. So if we look for example at activity C, that tells me I can't commence activity C until activity A has been completed. Can't commence activity D until activity A is commenced, or completed rather, and I can't commence activity E until activity B is completed, and so forth. Let's see what that looks like. So as we just said, you can't complete activity C until activity A has been completed. You can't commence activity D until activity A is completed. So this is a network diagram. It is a graphical representation of the activity chart. What we have is two vertices. We commonly refer to as nodes when we're looking at our forward and backward scanning. It has an activity in between. So this first line arrow or edge represents activity A that takes six minutes to complete. At the completion of activity A we can commence activity C which will take four minutes to complete. Also we can commence activity D which takes two to complete and so forth. So let's think about every one of these arrows having a starting and a finishing time for a particular activity. So let's have a look at a forward scan. For scanning I draw two rectangular or square boxes above each of the nodes or vertices. And I start in the blue box with a time of zero and I'm going to move forward this particular network. So first of all, starting at zero, activity A takes six minutes. So the earliest time activity A can, can be completed is a time of six minutes. Activity C after that six will take a further four, so the earliest time that it will be completed, or that F can start, will be ten minutes. Activity D started at six minutes, the earliest time it can commence, and it will take a further two, so Activity G, so earliest starting time is 8 minutes. And you work your way through. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. 10 plus 5 gives me 15. However, you notice I've got 1, 2, 3 possible activities leading to my finish point. So if I follow activity F, that will take 15 minutes to complete. The earliest possible time. Following G, it's an 8 plus 1 gives me 9. H is a 7 plus 2 gives me 9 as well. So here, in my last particular collection of boxes, I have three options. A 15, a 9, or a 9. Now if I were to enter in 9, that means there's no way I could actually complete activity A, C, and F following this particular sequence, because the 6, 4, and the 5 gives me 15 minutes. When I have competing activities, I have to take the larger of the numbers. So 15 minutes is chosen. A shorter time would not allow A, C, and F to be completed. When you have one, two, three or more options, multiple options coming into a final vertex, or any vertex for that matter, a node, you have to pick the larger of these options when you're performing a forward scan. So in this case, the earliest completion time for this project is 15 minutes. Let's now consider a backward scan. We're now using the yellow squares or rectangles. We start by copying in the earliest completion time, 15, into the first box. Now we work backwards. 15 minus 5 gives me 10. 15 minus 1 gives me 14. 15 minus 2 gives me 13. 13 minus 4 gives me 9. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. However, you'll notice if we're working backwards, there's activity D to consider as well. 14 take 2 gives me 12. Now I've got two options here. When we're performing a backward scan, instead of taking the largest value, we take the smaller of the two. So always pick the smaller option, so we choose path C which is 6. Last couple we've got 6 minus 6 gives me 0 if I take activity A scanning backwards but also I have activity B to consider and it has a 9 take 3 would give me 6. Take the smaller of the option which is 0. So we now have completed a forward and a backward scan. Let's now have a look at our critical path. Now a critical path is the path we must take whereby to extend or delay any activity on that path will 
extend or delay the entire project. So let's consider. If we start at zero, activity A takes six minutes. Activity C takes four, which gives us a time of 10. Activity F takes five, which takes us a time of 15. We see that in each of these cases, the earliest starting time is equal to the latest starting time, the 0, 0, the 6, the 6, the 10, the 10, the 15, the 15. There is no room to be delayed. I couldn't delay activity A, C or F without impacting on the final completion time. If an activity is not on the critical path, we can consider the float or the slack that's available. It's the time that these paths can be delayed which will not impact upon the final completion time. So let's consider each. The flow activity for B, which is not on the critical path, we take the latest completion time, which is a 9, and from that we take the earliest starting time, which is a 0. So a 9 takes 0 it gives me 9. And then from that value we subtract the duration of the activity. So it's 9, take 0 is 9, take 3, gives me a float time of 6. That means we could complete this task in the first three minutes and then sit and have a break, a coffee, relax for the next six minutes because the latest completion time or the latest starting time for the next activity is nine minutes. We only need three to get the job done. Moving on. The float for activity D. It has the latest time to complete of 14. Subtract the earliest time to start, which is six. 14 takes six, gives me eight minutes. And from that, we take away the activity time of two. So this also has a float of six minutes. Activity E has the latest completion time of 13, an earlier starting time of three. That gives me a difference of 10. Subtract the activity duration of four. It also has a float time of six minutes. Activity G, latest completion of 15, subtracting an, earl sorry, it's subtracting an earlier starting time of eight gives me seven minutes available to get the project finished. I only require one, so I have again six minutes of float time. And finally H, I have a latest completion time of 15. Subtract from that the earliest starting time of seven means I have eight minutes in which to complete this task. I only require two, so this one also has a float time of six minutes. I hope this video has been of some benefit in explaining forward paths. Uh, sorry, forward scanning, backward scanning, critical paths, and float time calculation. As always, thanks for watching.